The fact that your CV is lengthy doesn't mean it is effective or it doesn't mean that you're going to get an interview. Frankly, the opposite is true. The more meaty your CV is, the less likely you are going to be selected for an interview. It's, it's that simple. In this episode, we're going to be talking about what to include on your CV. It's going to be amazing. So actually, I did a course. This actually is a paid course um, on GH courses. And also, on a, uh, the, the same course is being adopted by the government of Ghana for uh, employability skills training for the youth of, of Ghana and by extension Africa. So I, I'm going to make this this portion available to you for free. I did a series of courses in uh, on how to write a perfect resume or perfect CV. So I just want you to enjoy this segment and I'll be bringing other segments through in the, in the coming uh, couple of weeks. It's just going to be a barrage of, uh, you're going to get a ton of free uh, stuff to help you to be able to craft the perfect CV or resume. So enjoy enjoy this one this segment is going to be about what to include on your cv and by extension what not to include in your cv all right if you haven't subscribed to this channel do well to subscribe because there are plenty of goodies here thank you so much so you watch this one and you are going to be excited all right how to write great cvs so another word for cv is a resume especially those um who are American inclined, they use resume a lot, and the British inclined use CVs a lot. Um, so we're gonna be learning about how to write effectively, how to effectively write CVs that would get you interviews. So let's jump right in. So the, the, the first thing to consider is the overall, what is the purpose of the CV even? You know, because many young people and even People who are supposed to know better, they get it all wrong, you know. So the, the main purpose of a CV is very, very simple. It's purely to get you a job interview with an employer. It's that simple. Simply get you an interview. Get you an interview, okay? The reason why I'm emphasizing this is that a lot of people who seem to think that if you met a potential employer and they told you that they have this job opening at their uh, at their facility or at their place of work therefore you should submit a cv many people seem to get overjoyed in the sense that they think they already have the job sending your cv does not guarantee you the job it doesn't all that it does, the purpose of it, the basic purpose of it is to give you the opportunity to come and demonstrate your skill set, your personality, your attitude and everything to see if you would fit into that room. So I'm just going to talk to you about something very, very important. So if you would remember when we did a walkthrough of the two formats for constructing your CV, we talked about the traditional method or the traditional format and then the modern design kind of concept, right? And looking at both, you realize that the, the meat version or the, or the substantive version of those CVs all started with the work experience, then the education, then the personal or other interests or other achievements, right? Then you, it followed with uh, the, the hobbies and the languages and the likes. So each one of them started with the work experience. But I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a caveat here. Now, if you don't have a lot of work experience under your belt, or actually no work experience at all, there's nothing wrong with you writing a good CV anyway. All that you have to do is that you have to repurpose your strength, right? So I will say this, always, lead you're going to always lead with the section that you are the most strongest at so if you are the most strongest at education start with education then you will just uh, uh i would say pepper spray it with with some work experience 
And if you don't have any work experience, do it's fine. It all depends about the job that you're going for and the kind of employer that uh, you are looking to work with. So there is no black and white here. To well, always go with or flow with the area of your greatest strength. Don't let the work experience stifle you. If you have great education, go with great education. If you have great accomplishments outside of education and you want to start with that, more power to you. You can do that as well, right? It's there's no there's no uh, cookie, cookie cutter kind of version of resume. It make the resume unique about you. And what do you have to include in your CV to make you stand out? Remember, the fact that your CV is lengthy doesn't mean it is effective or it doesn't mean that you're going to get an interview. Frankly, the opposite is true. The more meaty your CV is, the less likely you're going to be selected for an interview. It, it's that simple because of the way that recruiters and employers handle resumes when they receive them. They handle probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them per vacancy. And therefore, they use only a few seconds to scan through your resume to make you progress to the next level. So it is imperative that you keep your resume very succinct, straight to the point. And how do you do that? And that is what this lesson is all about. So there are three pillars when it comes to what content should go into your CV, right? What content? The first block is that whatever you're going to put on your CV must be impressive. If I were to qualify that, I would say super impressive. Impressive in the sense that, let's say you, um, I had, you, you were selected or, or you received an award for an impressive job. Let's say um, you, you worked in a company and you exceeded your sales quota, you were in a sales position, and you exceeded your sales quota by, let's say, 200%. And that automatically triggered you being awarded to go and see the, to go and have dinner with the CEO and they gave you some plaque or something to show that you did something incredible. That would qualify as impressive. Okay, so think about it in terms of your work experience, your educational background, right? So, and, and it's going to be impressive. I'm talking about impressive in terms of these two buckets, right? Your work experience and your education. So, in school, maybe you received um, an award or, for, or a scholarship, you know, based on the, your work ethic or based on the output of your academic work. You, you just, you receive some international recognition. These are the kind of information that you have to provide on your CV, right? Then the next um, subset is going to be any information that is interesting. So if, if you have something that is interesting, yes, include that in your CV. So up until this point, what we're saying is that if the, what you want to put on there is not impressive and is not interesting, it's not going to be, uh, uh, it, it's not going to have to make its way onto your CV or resume. That's a big no-no, right? And Talking of what is interesting, interesting basically means, let's say you had the chance, maybe your parents were rich, and you took a sabbatical. That's, let's say, a six-month or one-year leave, right? And they took you to travel with them across the world. You visited, let's say, 20 countries on your trip. That is a massive thing. You have to put that on your CV, okay? You have to put that on your CV. Or... Let's say you, you, you and a, a friend or yourself went to a very the most, the remotest part of your country where you're from. So if you're from Nigeria, let's say you live in a very nice, you live in Lagos or any of these big cities and you decided to uh, go for hiking for, let's say, two and a half weeks or a month. Going to live in a place that there are only two, people, two, two huts, right? Two little huts and forests. And it takes one week for the for the public transport to visit that that village that you are. 
and how you're able to survive. You can, that, I think that is interesting. Somebody want to know because it's talking about somebody who is resilient, right? It's talking about resilience, right? So if you have something interesting, like I know these stories are kind of extremes, but just begin to think about your life as to what can be, what you put in there that's impressive, what is you, you can put it in that is interesting, right? And the third bucket is going to be putting there something that is unique, something that is so unique to you. You know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, the whole world is filled with carbon copies, right? But you may have done something that makes you, you, that makes it so unique to your personality, unique to who you are, right? And, and if you can think of something like that, then I, I, I think it's fair to say you have to put it in your, in your CV. In the nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that only put things that are going to make you highly marketable to an employer. If these things do not qualify, don't put them there. Right? Don't, don't put them there. If it's not impressive, interesting, or unique, please don't. Right? Don't do that. So with that said, well, let's go to the uh, next lesson. You know, next lesson is going to be interesting as well. So let, let's, let's quickly jump there. Thank you for your time.